Hey, it's Annabelle and Bambi. We're in the kitchen today. We're gonna do some fun artsy stuff as well as show you how to make chili oil. I have my friend Linda here to walk us through it. I'm so excited because it's my first collab in a very long time. So without further ado, ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, and yeehaw, everyone. I met her in my last apartment because we were neighbors. We became fast friends because we both have two cats. You might know me from my webcomic, Panda Cup Stories, on Instagram. I also teach a cooking course. Um, it's called Panda Cup Diner. So for everybody watching the day or the week that I go live, um, we have a follow-up class on Saturday. So in the description, I will have everything in detail. Yes, yeah. um, I will I will be over and we will be streaming. The recipe I'll be sharing with everyone is my five-minute chili oil recipe, which is actually my family recipe with only three ingredients. So I'm so surprised yeah. by like how <laughs> simple everything is all laid out here. Indeed, indeed. And um, this also has to do with kind of like how I taught myself to cook, what I learned after being diagnosed with ADHD is really for cooking to be fun with me to start I need to start with like just very basics Linda's handling the food and the teaching and then for me being the new ceramic artist that I am I, I wanted to stuff. hand make something <laughs> and I would heard her talk about before how she stores her homemade chili oil in a ceramic jar. Yes, you can store it at room temperature. And honestly, my family has used um, old salsa jars before, but usually I would recommend, and my mom also recommends, even though she doesn't always follow her own advice, <laughs> is to go with ceramic um, as opposed to something like glass. And then definitely you don't want to use plastic. With ceramics, it's very heat resistant. It doesn't crack, right? It's like yeah. dink baked in a kiln anyway yeah. and so like at 2200 degrees I believe was the cone I used. I will jump right into my design and crafting of the ceramic jar and you'll see how I made it. I have a few pounds of white clay here. I'm eyeballing what I need and then what I don't use I'm going to make my lid and the spoon out of later. I'm drawing inspiration from the beloved characters featured in Linda's comics. We've got Panda of Panda Cup Stories and then his assistant hedgehog named Hedgy. I'm using this picture reference and I was like okay perfect. That's my jar right there. Using the pinch pot method, I'm opening up into like a bottom heavy jar, almost like a wine glass. And after I make the walls as even as I can, maybe like a centimeter in thickness all around, I can move it onto my wheel. And I have air quotes for wheel because what I'm using is a Lazy Susan spice rack. And I actually also use this exact Lazy Susan to decorate cakes. The longer I work, the harder the clay gets. So you wanna make sure you spray it from time to time. But as it gets harder, I can also make the walls taller and thinner because there's more structural integrity. And the technical parts of making a jar, I'm just winging it because I kind of like the challenge and the mystery instead of looking up a tutorial and following it very closely to make sure like everything's perfect. So I'm adding a band of clay on the inside and my idea is that the lid will have a flange that rests on top of the jar. And then very important, before the clay dries too much, you have to score and slip any attachments you want. So I'm putting on the ears right now and I decided I'm going to put it on the jar rather than the top of the lid because the lid is just not big enough to fit in hedgy and the ears and then that would complicate the proportions of the jar so instead I'm gonna put it on the side of the head and it's gonna look like more of human ears moving on to the lid now instead of attaching clay I'm cutting the rim to make two flaps my technique is really wonky it's just not working out so I'm ditching this idea I'm gonna take off what I did to the rim of the jar and just leave it an open jar because if, if anything I think it's easier to use ah, I cringe so hard every time I fumble with ceramics my favorite part had to have been sculpting hedgy it was so fun I kind of got lost in it and I forgot to film and it's super fun to come up with different ways to mark make to convey different textures and then I'm treating this like a sketch while the clay is like this I can edit it and smooth it over and get the proportions correct so that I could basically just trace it when it's time to paint the features on now with the spoon I figure when it gets harder I'm going to cut away to make the bamboo stalk that I want and it's time to cover it up to set overnight Several hours later, the clay is leather hard, perfect for starting to trim and work away. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be really, really careful, really, really careful, but then still. Let me take time that I... Fuck! I 
goodness it's not too late to score and attach it back together i feel like i'm at the last straw like right before it just becomes a little too dry okay i cannot make any mistakes i cannot chip this the rim of the lid looks really different than how you saw it yesterday so that's ending up in a lot of editing changing it as i go but that's fine because i expected that that's what you get for eyeballing things clay shrinks every time you fire it so i always leave a little bit of allowance because you don't want it to be way too tight for comfort after the bisque firing, so the lid is not perfect and it can't spin it, it's time to decorate with underglaze. I quite like the look of natural white clay, it has this like grainy off-white color to it. But in this case, I wanted to almost imitate porcelain, so I'm covering everything in white, even the inside. I thought I would try something cool here by wiping away and covering the deep edges of Hedgie's needles in black. But then once I'm going back now in brown, I don't even know if this is going to show up because the brown is so much more opaque than I thought it would be. For the snout and the arms, I'm going for a gradient effect. So it's kind of just like working and blending the two colors in as much as I could, making sure you're layering it to have it smooth in the end. Same thing with the spoon. I'm actually watering it down a little bit to give it that grading effect rather than combining it with white. Thankfully, it survived the bisque firing. All I have to do is get it glazed and I think it should be good to go, but I will have to tell you one thing. Look at how I am wrapping the spoon, okay? When I get to the studio, I open up and I take out the paper towel and it completely unrolls and my spoon falls out and snaps in two, exactly where I mended it before because it's kind of like a vulnerable point. And I'm like, why do I have to be so careless? I shouldn't have just made one spoon, okay? That was my big mistake. I ran to the closest hardware store to put it back together, hoping that the glaze can solidify and almost act as a glue in the firing process. Thankfully, everything else turned out well and I'm dipping it in clear glaze and setting aside for the techs at the ceramics studio to help me fire it. Now fast forward to present day. She's never seen it. I didn't I'm even so show her. excited. <laughs> I didn't even tell her the design I had in mind. No. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. I can't. I'm like dead. There's a hedgehog. <laughs> the hedgehog is oh the my God. I love it so much, Annabelle. <laughs> Basically, Panda and Hedgie are personifications. Personifications. They're also cats in my comic. Um, we're, we're crazy cat people uh, <laughs> of, of my brain. So um, I talk about mental health a lot in my work as well. And so Panda is kind of a more scatterbrained, impulsive version of me. And she is kind of the more sort of sensitive, sometimes like, you know, spikes up into a ball, drying kind of my feelings and my thoughts as these cute little critters also helps me be very kind to myself if I'm having kind of a low mental health day. So I love this so much. And now we will jump into the how-to part of the chili oil. Perfect. I use this Korean chili powder that is very fine and not super spicy. Crushed red pepper flakes that you can just get at any normal grocery store. And finally, white sesame. And of course, we're going to be using some oil. So today we're using canola oil, but you can use any oil with a high smoke point. So, you know, peanut, veggie, avocado actually my parents have been using a lot of because um costco has been having a big sale and you know my parents never use measure <laughs> measuring utensils right so the ratio is one to one. Oh, hello there bambi anytime he hears some kind of lid coming off oh, he's like okay. for me about a third of a cup i'm using a little less of crushed red chili flakes so if you didn't have you know like access to an asian mart i would just put some chili flakes in the blender the reason why we also want some ground fine it helps release the flavors a lot more easily the finer it is so i'm just gonna put about this much in. Annabelle and I are also sharing uh, this recipe card as well in the free class that we're teaching. So, you know, yeah, don't worry about jotting down the measurements. We'll that have one. that for you. The panda and Hedgy, as well <laughs> as our little helpers. First, I would put in the chili powder and you shake it flat. This is gonna make your kitchen smell amazing. So then we take yeah. the crushed red pepper and then we are just gonna put enough sesame to create a thin layer on top so we'll see if we actually need this much we might not that looks good when we're adding hot oil in we want the uh, sesame to fry and release its aroma first if you don't have a wok that's totally fine you can also use you know 
something like this. We used about a third of a cup of the powder and the flake. So the oil is going to be three times this measurement. I'm gonna turn this onto high for now. Ooh, okay, well, I heard that's it. good. Yep, so you saw it sizzle a little, so now I'm gonna just turn it down to like medium low, okay. Ooh, so keep bubbling. <laughs> These ear handles are amazing. It smells so good. This is also a really nice gift if you know someone who loves spicy food. You know, make them like a homemade batch and just bring it over and it makes the perfect kind of like handmade gift. I could easily see this just being like, I would throw a tablespoon into any stir fry. Yep. And that is it, my friends. I love how simple it is. I hope that you enjoy this. If you would love to learn more this Saturday, tune in to our class at 3 p.m. Eastern time, where Linda's gonna show you how to make some basic dishes incorporating this chili oil. And I will be there to hang out and chat, do a little fun giveaway. And there is no cost of entry for this class, but you can purchase recipe cards, as well as subscribe to Linda's other cooking classes if you'd like. The link to sign up is below. We would love to see you there. I'm so excited. For now, I hope that you enjoyed our hangout today in this little cute wee Wednesday and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye! Bye! bye. 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 bye.